This is Season 5 of Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. Listen, laugh, and learn. This week on the show, we'll present useless information, as always, about history, geography, and we'll go down the garden path. Plus, we'll answer your question in our mailback segment. And the headline in the news from around the world this week, man gets freaked out over driverless car with a hand. <laughs> totally useless information. It's everything you never needed to know. Welcome to episode number nine. Happy today. What happens tomorrow is history. Yeah. That was so well done. Do you think do you think that uh, the guy who applies for that uh, job it it's, it said uh, hand job applications? <laughs> no, it's not that at all. It wasn't a <laughs> job. It was something that had happened to him. You'll find that out later in the show on Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. Welcome. And we're going to go back in history. A flashback. The trend for erasing prominent figures from historical events was typical of pictures from the Soviet regime, where Lenin no. and Trotsky often got the same treatment. A British collector and historian, David King, published a study in the form of a photo album and a study of the disappearance of the physical records of Trotsky and a number of other Russians, well, they fell out of favor, and guess what? Out of the pictures as well. In a mm. 1919 photo of a second anniversary celebration of the October Revolution, Vladimir Lenin stands on top of the set of stairs surrounded by many un unidentified men and children and a few recognizable men. Well, guess what? Including Leon Trotsky, stationed just in front of Lenin, by the time the photograph was published in 1967, Trotsky had disappeared. He had been airbrushed out along with several of the other commissars. Wow. It was like an early form of Photoshop. <laughs> wow. Cool. They actually took people out of the picture. Scary. That's yeah. happening all over. Get yeah. ready. Get yeah. ready, Canada. <laughs> okay. George Washington, the great general and the first president of the United States of America, mm -hmm. was also famous for something else. After the presidency, George Washington opened a distillery and produced whiskey. But he didn't just produce whiskey. He became the largest distributor of whiskey in the United States. What? Wow. That's right. George, don't play. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So here's something pretty cool, something that we can actually re relate to this in, in this modern times. Ancient Egyptians had an odd and oddly effective pregnancy test. One of the earliest written records of pregnancy is found in an ancient Egyptian papyrus dating around 1350 B.C. It called for a woman who might be pregnant to urinate on wheat and barley seeds over the course of several days. Hmm. According to the ancient Egyptian test, if the barley grows, it means it'll be a male child. If the wheat grows, it means a female child. If it does not grow, well, she won't bear at all. In 1963, when they tested this, it turned out that there might be more to something to this, right, than the, in the Egyptian pregnancy test. So they figured this out. They were freaked out. And the earliest known example of testing for pregnancy way back when, it actually worked because it showed the elevated levels of estrogen in pregnant women's urine. Really? So basically the family of eight had a lot of oatmeal. While the family of one had some bread. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, whole grains, yes. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. The tablecloth invented by the Romans was not invented to protect the table. No. In fact, it was invented as this one big communal napkin. Oh. Because the tables were usually large and 20, 30 people were sitting at the table. They just put this massive cloth on the table the people would eat like slobs and wipe their hands and their face all over the tablecloth. <laughs> wow. Of course, I had large gatherings. There were Romans, there were Italians. I, to, I wish I was there. I mean, are you kidding me? Slobbering down on some big piece of boned meat and then just wiping my mm. whole face on the table. <laughs> yum, yum. Yeah, I could just, I think we, all of us, including the studio audience, can figure that out. They can, they seen can that picture movie, that. I seen Caligula. Oh, but go yeah. ahead. <laughs> yeah, you've seen a lot more. Ancient Greeks and Romans had flush toilets and public restrooms. In the second millennium BC, 
the Minoans of ancient Crete developed toilets with a capacity to flush waste. For centuries, that remained a luxury available only to the elites until the first millennium BC, when the spread of prosperity allowed the introduction of flush toilets to the middle-class houses. Before long, some ancient Greek cities had built large-scale latrines that were open to the general public, and you know what they look like. These were public restrooms consisting of large room with bench seats connected to a drainage oh, yeah. system. So you sit there and you're okay. just kind of hanging out on a bench. You're going to shoot the, shoot the, you know what, you with Shoot somebody. the crap, yes, with everybody. Literally, no yeah. pun intended. <laughs> I swear I would not sit next to you, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Friends for over 40 years, best friends for 40 years, but you know what? No thanks. Yeah, you want to stay that way. That's don't right. sit next yeah, to me. Yeah, because you think your it. crap don't stink. Yeah, okay, sure. Oh, let me tell you something. I forget <laughs> it. I clear out the whole room. Be a <laughs> private bathroom. Roman Catholics, I love this one, guys. Get ready. Roman Catholics in Bavaria, that is in Germany. They founded a secret society in 1740 called the Order of the Pug. Oh, like the dogs? The Order of the Pug, yes, like the dogs. New members had to wear a dog collar and scratch at the door to get in. (laughs) No, no. no. Really? (laughs) This paramasonic society was active until 1902. From 1740 to 1902, there were people... Now, later on, that would become the village people. Now, <laughs> later on, that club would be called Studio 54, <laughs> where grown men wore dog collars and scratched at the door to get in. That's right. What's the password? <laughs> it's nothing more than an S&M society, but whatever. I thought that was great. The Order of the Pug. I think I'm going to start that over again. The Order of the Pug. Uh, An excessive display of grief by deceased relatives, especially for the upper-class Romans, was Mm. seen as somewhat gauche and undignified. So they solved this by hiring professional mourners. (laughs) Okay? For a fee, special women could be hired to do all the extraordinary wailing and all kinds of displays of grief, the kinds of emotional displays that custom-kept, well-born Roman women from demonstrating in public, while the professional mourners would weep to impress the crowds and to seriously sell their sadness. They would throw dust and dirt on themselves and tear out their hair and rip their clothes and scratch their faces until they drew blood. Eventually, Mm -hmm. the displays of professional mourning became too much, so laws were passed to prohibit the hiring of professional mourners because their antics, quote, invoked strong emotions and were incompatible with the idea of the quiet life of the citizen, end quote. From the looks of your head, Nick, you went to a lot of mourning things lately, and <laughs> yes. I think you should give it a break for a couple of years. What I want to know is, can you can you mourn in the afternoon? Is there Why would they tear their hair out, the stupid asses? Just I don't bring, know. Bring like an onion or something and keep putting it up towards your eyes, you know? There Start you screaming. They don't know. Listen to this. Between the 11th and 19th century, this one's cool. A number of Buddhist monks successfully mummified themselves to death. Yeah. They, uh, listen to this, they adopted the practice known as Sukushin Butsu. Right. Sukushin Butsu. Yeah. In which over the course of many months, they weaned themselves off of food and water until the point where they dried their skin out and their organs inside until they eventually starve themselves to death while mummifying themselves at the same time. Today, we call it a diet. Wait, what? That's why I don't do it, folks. No, I'm that's scared. right. He's really I'm scared. scared. I'm scared. He's really scared. <laughs> we thank you for listening. For the, all of you, all over North America, actually, you know what? All over the world, over 60, count them, 60 countries are now listening to totally useless information with Nick and Roy. We really thank you for joining us. And you know our website, nickandroy.com. We made it really simple for you, nickandroy.com. You can send yeah, us Yeah, it's email. easy, nickandroy.com. Yeah. How do you get that wrong? Nickandroy.com? No, you can't. No, not at all. Hey, we're going places. Throw away your totally useless GPS. It's time for geography. So get lost. With Nick and Roy. Alaska is both the westernmost and easternmost state. Can Why can't we... you ask him? Ask who? You said Alaska. Oh. <laughs> 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 what was it? Uh, Idaho, Alaska. 
Are you back to the owl thing? Yes. <laughs> like, you can call me owl. Uh, Alaska is the westernmost and northernmost state in the United States, which makes a lot of sense when you look at the map. But mm. most surprisingly, the state manages to be the easternmost state as well. Parts of Alaska are so far west that the state actually stretches into the eastern hemisphere. Longitude lines coverage at the top and the bottom of the globe. So at uh, po Pochino, Pochoni, Pochoni Point, boy, that sounds like a bad word in Italian. Oh, the Pochoni yeah. Point, Alaska, has the easternmost oh, longitude <laughs> of any point in the country. <laughs> so all you have to remember, because as we encourage you to grab a pen or pencil and a piece of paper to write it down, because we give you lots of information, lots yeah, of useless and If you're as confused as I am after hearing Nick talking about the westernly, most longitudinally, whatever the hell he was saying. <laughs> in Pochoni Point, Alaska. Pachoni, the old Pachaki. Did you know that Saudi Arabia has no lakes? No. And no rivers. Oh. Hell, they practically have no water <laughs> other than salt water. And they have a few oases, they call. They're pretty much just small wells. But So they literally desalinize the water to have any type of vegetation and crops. But they got no water but plenty of oil. <laughs> that they do absolutely if the entire world were as densely populated as new york city our old stomping grounds yes. the whole population would cover 250,404 square miles that means the entire world can fit into the state of texas if you would condense it <laughs> For you find this on confusing.com. <laughs> you know what? I don't I don't know where I found it. For comparison, if the world had the same population density as Houston, it would cover 1.769 square miles. <laughs> 1.67 million. But then being able to hypothetically fit over 7 billion and even smaller is pretty impressive. You got that? Yeah. I'm still thinking about Texas. <laughs> Everything, <laughs> everything's big in Texas, you know. Okay, this year, yes, uh, two thousand twenty-one. Right. We are not experiencing a large hurricane season in Florida because most of the hurricanes are going down past Cuba because of Sahara dust. Oh. Now, I don't know if anybody in the rest of the world has heard about this, but the dust from over in Africa, the Sahara Desert in Africa, is in the atmosphere and blowing across the Atlantic Ocean, and it is changing the atmospheric pressures and the density of these storms. Now, this is crazy, but Sahara dust, it actually reaches way up into the atmosphere, blows across the Atlantic, travels through the Caribbean, a lot of the Caribbean islands are experiencing, they can test the soil and find the Sahara dust. It makes it all the way to the Florida panhandle. They can detect African dirt and dust here. My wife went with a Swift for last week, and I swear to you, it was African dust. <laughs> it was. No, really. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. Australia may be surrounded <laughs> by water. And it doesn't have the world's longest coastline. Could you imagine? It's surrounded by water, but it yeah. doesn't have the world's largest coastline. Being its own continent and completely surrounded by water, you'd think, well, it's easy, right, to have the honor of being the country with the longest coastline. No. The title goes to my homeland, Canada. Canada has 152,100 miles of coastline compared wow. to 16,000 miles in Australia. Oh, wow. In fact, Australia ranks seventh on the list of the world's longest coastlines, coming in behind Indonesia, Greenland, Russia, the Philippines, and Japan. Oh, wow. You would think that, that Australia would have most of it. Yeah. No. Nope. Cool. See, that wasn't so confusing either. About what? If you <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. If you climbed Mount Everest in the Himalayas, things like that. Uh-huh. You'd say you'd climb the highest point in the world, and you'd claim, I've climbed the highest point in the world, the pinnacle. I have no place else to go. Except, think again, moron. You better climb it again next year because Everest grows 0 0.06 inches or 1.5 centimeters for you Canuckies. Thank you. Every year it grows a half an inch. So 
basically, you better get back up there next year again because you didn't climb the highest mountain. <laughs> climb every mountain, yeah. Wow, goodness gracious. Monowai in Boyd County, Nebraska, is hmm. somewhere far from anywhere. Got that? Is somewhere yeah. far from Oh, here from we anywhere. go again. <laughs> <laughs> the town, if you can even call it that, according to the U.S. Census, it's a village, really, sits right smack dab in the flat center of the continental United States, four miles from South Dakota border and 60 miles from the nearest Walmart, surrounded mm. by dirt roads and wind through rolling farmland. The 535-square-mile county has a population of just 2,000, but three of its towns have fewer than 10 people. In fact... Manawai, its claim to fame, has a population of one. <laughs> She's 89 years old. It used to be two, but then her husband died a few years ago. She's complaining why she doesn't have a Walmart in her town. <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> so there you have a population she of one. She has a wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, barely. So she has a population of one, which is, I guess, they've really named the town perfectly. Mano I. Mano, right? Yeah. One. Mano I Mano. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Did you know that in Venice, you can take a gondola ride around the canals? Have you ever been to Venice? Oh, it's, I have, and what a beautiful experience. Did you ride a gondola? Yes, I did. What color was it? It was black. They're all black. They have to be. It's a law. Oh. Because you have to paint it black because it's official property. It has to be registered like a car, and it is official property. And in order to register a gondola, it has to be black. Wow, I didn't know that. I thought Write I, that one down, folks. I dun, just, dun, you know what? In fact, <laughs> I just did. <laughs> As you're listening to Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. Down the garden path with Nick and Roy. You know, we're, we're in a sad state of affairs. Owned. <laughs> What's that? No, she's not. That's Mother Nature. Don't you know it's Mother Nature? <laughs> This is how you... she's smoking the natural weed, so to speak. <laughs> Come on, it's legal in Canada. She doesn't smoke that stuff. That's true. It is legal. The only thing she does smoke is chicken. Um, <laughs> she <laughs> smokes a mean chicken. That's right. She does. <laughs> the nasty bird. <laughs> yeah. And she stuffs it. Um, the flower named Ar Archaea fructus simnesis. Hmm. It bloomed around 125 million years ago, and it resembles a water lily. The juice from the bluebell flowers was used historically to make glue. Foxglove is an old English name derived from the belief that foxes slip their feet into the leaves of the plant to sneak up on the prey. But Ooh. it was originally used to make glue. Pretty sticky flower. This is kind of like almost like foodish, but tomato juice is the official beverage of Ohio. <laughs> this one I looked at and I was like, what? Like, what were they thinking in Ohio? <laughs> Let's do tomato juice. Eh? <laughs> Probably loading it with vodka, you Ohio drunks. <laughs> well, we love people. Come on, we have listeners in Ohio. At least we did I, until a few I moments know we ago. Do. I know we do, and hopefully they're drunk, and they didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully they're having a nice Bloody Mary. They started this a long time ago. They popularized the tomato in the early 1800s, and they grow a whole lot of them in Ohio probably why they popularized it well i'll tell you this this is a, an additional bonus bonus fact coming off of what you just said so the mm. official drink of canada which is where i live is the bloody caesar the bloody right. caesar is our national drink the key ingredients are vodka clam juice tomato juice spices and worcestershire shyster sauce so mm. you guys call it a bloody mary we call it a bloody caesar and it is the official drink of canada mm. another bonus fact Worcestershire sauce yes. comes from the town of Worcestershire. A chef there made a special sauce for the king. He tasted it. He hated it. The cook said, take that barrel and put it in the basement. Forgot that it was there. Came back a month later. It had fermented and became what we eat today, Worcestershire sauce. They tasted it and they said, that's magnificent. And wow. from that point on, they created fermented Worcestershire sauce. See? You learn so much on this Wait, show. Let me, let me write it down. It's Hold crazy, on. I tell you. Let me write it down. How do you spell Worcestershire? 
You spell it with an with an R. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that helps a lot. From a botanical from a botanical standpoint, strictly botanical. Yes. That's what I told most of my girlfriends. This relationship <laughs> is strictly botanical. <laughs> yeah, they made sure of that. It's strictly botanical. But anyway, avocados and pumpkins are not vegetables. They're fruits. Fruits. Yes. Avocados and pumpkins are considered fruits, while rhubarb. Mm-hmm. You ever have rhubarb pie? No, I've, I've rhubarb? had rhubarb in my yogurt. Oh, I had a strawberry rhubarb pie that was awesome. Mm. But rhubarb is a vegetable. Oh. Not a fruit. So uh, I have a lawn, you have a lawn, and it's not like Oprah. You get a lawn, you get a lawn. Um, <laughs> if you have a lawn or you have a neighbor that does and, and you hear you know, the, the lawnmower going and you smell the grass, right? You smell it, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, the smell of freshly cut grass is caused by distress signals. No. Yes. The plants, the, the grass the grass blades are actually damaged and they're marked they're by screaming? the screaming? They're screaming through Oh through, the through, humanity of it all. Yes. They're <laughs> marked by the release of volatile organic molecules like esters and aldehydes. Have you ever mm. been like really like if you really walk down uh, a street or you hear it and you and you're beside a freshly mowed lawn or a golf course or baseball field even soaking up all that invigorating smell from the ground at your feet well guess what that's just the grass sending out distress signals that's a screaming grass yes wow saffron mm. is a super expensive spice used in Mediterranean cooking. It's great. It kind of gives it that yellowish color and everything. It's just saffron's amazing to cook with, but super expensive. Did you know, though, that there's amazing, there's amazing flavor from it, too? But did you know that it's harvested from the crocus flower? Oh, the stamen, which is the penis type portion coming out of the like a lily. You ever see a lily has like a, it looks like a like a little pee pee coming out of it. <laughs> <laughs> is that the official, is, all is that scientific yeah. stuff here? Is, is this the botanical version of? Is that the botanical name for the yes, peepee? Yes, the old peepee. <laughs> That's so right. they take the peepee from the crocus plant, which has this this um you know it's on the stamen, and they literally brush it off. That's why it's so expensive. You must have to brush a lot of peepees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, large oak trees and beech trees, mm. they're pretty large. And yeah. there's a lot of evaporation happening. Okay, this is, is. there. Are. If <laughs> okay, you want to I'll find out, <laughs> the evaporation from these large trees is from 10 to 25 gallons in 24 hours. It evaporates into the air? That's right. The evaporation from large oak or beech trees is from anywhere from 10 to 25 gallons in 24 hours. Wow. And then you wonder when it rains, why it rains so much. That's one tree, right? There you go. Exactly. On your freshly mowed grass that smells. That's so there you go. Out Again, you learn something on this show. Yep. I know you don't care because it's useless, but it's in your head now, folks. You can't get it out. That's right. Until you tell somebody and then you have to tell them about the show and then it's all over. Yeah. And then go to nickandroy.com and then send us an email. I mean, you know, it's uh, yeah. it never ends. How's about this one? The mm. oleander is a beautiful Mediterranean flowering shrub. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so get ready. The entire plant, not just the flowers, not just the leaves, the entire plant, roots, stems, and all, are poisonous. The entire plant, if you ate it, will kill you. One of the very few. So we're, we're providing a lot of human noise, and we apologize, but thank you for listening to Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. <laughs> There's been a significant amount of research done into the impact that human noise has on plants. Published in the journal Proceedings of the Royal Society B, the study was led by Clinton Francis in North Carolina, who found that because animals pollinate many plants or eat and disperse their seeds, the impact of human noise on animal colonies may also affect the plants they service as well. In cases mm-hmm. where noise has ripple effects on long-lived plants like trees, the consequences could last for decades, even after the source of the noise goes away, according to the research. So human noise affects the plants and the animals that pollinate them. What did you say? They, they what with their seeds? They distributed their seeds? They, yes, they pollinate. 
That sounded like a year in high school. Yeah, just a year. You're listening. <laughs> That's why I don't go on 23 and Me. you know? <laughs> so all you have to do in, is go to our website, and uh, there's all kinds of stuff there, like previous episodes and uh, an opportunity for you to send us an email and a complaint and affidavits from your lawyer's office. Nick and Roy, it's WW. I don't even want to say Triple W anymore. Everyone knows Triple W. If you don't know it by now, then... Forget it. And then tell them. <laughs> Triple W, Nick and Roy dot com. What's in the mail bag? What's in the mail? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what's in the mail bag. What's in the mail bag? I'm going through the mail. When we first started this show, folks, we'd sit there and we'd get like one piece of mail. Right. Maybe two or three. Yeah. We were so excited when yeah. we'd get like 10. Now we get hundreds of pieces of mail that it, we, we actually do go through them. We kind of split them up, but I love this one from Mary Lou. And she's from your neck of the woods in Toronto, Canada. She hey says, I've listened to your podcast for the last year. I love it. Thank you. She goes, imagine how surprised and happy I was when I turned on the radio and heard your show on the radio. You guys are doing really great. Oh, Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Mary Lou from Canada. Yes, Nick, tell them where we are. Oh, thank you, Mary Lou. That's wonderful. Oh, I'm, I'm blushing. Now. Can you blush on the radio? Can you blush on the podcast? We, we're, I'm fanning myself now, really. Um, thank you very much. It's really humbling. Um, yes, we're on the iHeartRadio network. We're on, on one, two, three, four stations and maybe a fifth station soon on the iHeartRadio network in Toronto, Montreal. London, Ontario, and Windsor, which is just out of Detroit. So some of the uh, American friends are listening to us. And yes, pretty it even falls into parts of, uh, of, of the United States. Detroit, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. So on the radio and uh, currently, as of this recording, we're on Friday nights at midnight or early Saturday morning. And this is a great way for you to fall asleep. In fact, we had somebody who said to us. Why, Nick? Do they fall asleep when they hear us? No, this, this is... <laughs> well, <laughs> You know, it kind of sounds, sounds like that, but the it's not. cure for insomniacs. <laughs> yes. What he said was, he said, first of all, he said, with all the crazy stuff that's going on you know, in the world and listen to the news and my kids are screaming, I just like to unwind and relax and laugh. I, I go to bed laughing. And then I said, well, so do I. But what anyway. Does mirrors, what does he have, mirrors above the bed? <laughs> so, but he appreciates, you know, the banter back and forth and he appreciates, you know, he knows we're friends and so on. So, yeah, so um, we're on the iHeartRadio network. Of course, you can go to the iHeartRadio app and download all of our episodes and you follow us. And every time we have a new episode, you'll get one. But thank you so much, Mary Lou. We really appreciate that. Just check us out on the iHeartRadio network. And, yeah, uh, Mary, yeah. we we love you the way you love our show. Thanks for listening. Thanks for telling your friends. And yes, it is it is cool that we're on the radio. And Nick's head is so swollen; his headphones don't fit. <laughs> Those aren't my headphones. Francesca from Columbus, Ohio, writes: "Dear Nick and Roy, we love listening to your show. We are so fed up with crime stories and murder mystery podcasts. They depress us." At least with you guys, we can talk to our friends about what we learned. I was wondering one day while waiting in line to get my morning coffee, how long will it take for one million seconds to elapse? Ooh. I was wondering how long was that coffee line? Uh, it's a great question. <laughs> that woman needs a cup. <laughs> yeah. Great question, Francesca. According to the New York Times, it would take 12 days for a million seconds to elapse. Oh, cool. So it's 12 days. 12 days. 31.7 years for a billion seconds to elapse. Oh, wow. And a trillion seconds would amount to no less than 31,709.8 years. Jeez. Yeah. So they say they spend trillions of dollars, folks. Get scared. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. There you have it. So once again, you go to our website, nickandroy.com. You can send us an email. We've made it really simple for you. All you have to do is click on the tab that says contact us, nickandroy.com. And now for something completely useless. This is easy for me. Mm -hmm. I'm full of useless stuff. Sure are. <laughs> when a cranberry is forming, yes, a small pocket of air forms inside the berry yeah so when it becomes a full-size cranberry the bogs are flooded and the berries float to the top because there's an air cavity inside of them kind of like a lifeboat oh, they float cool. to the top. 
They also can bounce as high as like a Super Bowl because the air inside gives them the ability to bounce just like a tennis ball or a Spalding ball. That's amazing. That's pretty cool. So they're like airheads like us. Yeah, you know, if you like bouncing a ball. Uh, muscles have feet. Well, they look what? like, yeah, muscles have feet. Well, while it might look like clams, they have a big tongue that sometimes protrudes from their shell to poke around the ocean floor. What you're actually seeing is a foot. What are you look? What are you laughing at? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Come on, this is this is useless fact, okay? The appendage, okay, foot. the foot, okay. the appendage, relatively long in comparison to the overall size of the creature, is mm. used to dig in the sand. But it's their foot. It's their foot. And the, you know what they say: big feet. Big small, heart. Small clams. <laughs> That's crazy. So today we talked about all kinds of neat stuff, and we really appreciate you listening. We talked about, what the hell did we talk about? Hold on. We talked Garden. Hold we on, talked please. about history, geography. Yeah. You know what it's time for? The news? And now, <laughs> from around the corner and around the world, this is T. This happened in a little town in Saskatchewan here in Canada. Even though it sounds like an Alfred Hitchcock tale and something you'd hear around Halloween, Harry was on the side of the road hitchhiking on a very dark and stormy Halloween night. The night was getting darker and the rain came harder and the co- no cars went by. The storm was so strong he could, car- he could hardly see a few feet ahead of him. <laughs> Suddenly, Harry saw a car that came toward him and stopped. Without thinking about it, Harry got into the car and closed the door just as he realized there was nobody behind the wheel. The car car started to move. And this wasn't one of those self-driving cars. This was like an old-fashioned, like regular car. This was not autonomous. It was not autonomous. No, everyone knew what was going on. The, The car started to move. As panic set in, he looked at the road and saw a curve coming his way. Scared beyond belief, with no driver in the car, he started to pray, begging for his life. Just when the car had got to the curve, Harry thought it was all over until a hand appeared through the window and moved the wheel. What? Harry was paralyzed. Just a hand. Paralyzed. No, it wasn't the muscle. It wasn't the muscle feet. Just one hand. Just though, one hand. Out of- came out of nowhere and moved the wheel. Harry was paralyzed in terror as he watched the hand appear every time he got to the curve. Harry wasn't just paralyzed in terror. I hope he had depends on (laughs) Probably. (laughs) It scared the you-know-what. It sure did. (laughs) He had gathered some strength. Harry jumped out of the car and ran to the nearest town. He was wet, of course, because of the rain. Yeah, he was wet. Did the car stop, or did he do like one of those acrobatic rolls? It doesn't say exactly, but he was wet. And we, we think because of the rain. I and, hope, and because he, he probably wet himself. He probably right. saw that hand come out. I would. I'd be like, what the hell is going on he here? He went to a bar and asked for two shots of rye. He was so nervous. He started telling everyone about the horrible experience he went through. Like, first the bad driving, now a hand job. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the crowd <laughs> sat in eerie silence because he was telling everybody. And then they realized that Harry was crying, but he wasn't drunk. No. About, of course he wasn't drunk. He was scared you know what list. That's right. About half an hour later, two guys walked into the same bar. One said mm-hmm. to the other, hey, look, Pete, that's the jerk who got into the car when we were pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> and Harry did have drinks. Yeah, you and then after this. that, yeah, and then he bought them drinks. But yeah, but because they no, were. But just, Harry was drunk. He must have been. So he yeah, was. the poor Where, guy. What did they think about the hand? The hand came out the window, probably, and the guy was steering the car. They were outside the car, pushing the car, and the guy said, look, Pete, there's the jerk that got in the car when we were pushing it. Yeah, Yeah. well, Harry, from where was he from? Northern Saskatchewan in Canada. Yeah, well, Harry's just a complete idiot. (laughs) 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 Let's face it. Number one, why'd he get in the car in the first place? Number two, I guess it was raining so hard he couldn't see the two guys behind the car. Exactly. The two guys are idiots, too, because if I'm pushing the car, I don't want any extra weight in it. I would have been like, hey, what's your name? Harry, get the hell out and push with us. <laughs> That's right. Or at least get behind the wheel and steer the damn thing. <laughs> that's right, exactly. Well, that's all the time that we have. Speaking of steering, that's all the time that we have. That made no sense. Uh, that's all the time that we have for this week's episode. 
<laughs> I'm totally useless information with Nick Why and Wayne. Why did any of the show actually make sense? It doesn't. I mean, look at the title. Uh, we thank you. We will uh, scour the internet and other sources, and we do. We check everything out. We go under rocks. We check out information. For more useless information for you guys next time. Well, thanks for sharing some time with us. We do appreciate it. And thank you for everyone that tells a friend and puts us all over Facebook. And we do appreciate that as well. Tell a friend about the trend. I'm Nick. And I'm Roy. Thanks for listening. Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy is a production of NickAndRoy.com. Visit NickAndRoy.com to access the full library of episodes or wherever you get your podcasts.